What's up? All right, I'll tell you what's up. So the agenda, motivation, problem. It's a real problem. I hope you see that. Uh, this is already work, obviously, but I'll, I'll get to those things. So we'll go over that. I will propose a solution and also do a live demo. And then uh, next steps and challenges. And then, of course, hopefully you'll have some questions. So first thing is, who am I? Uh, you all know about me, but I wanted to kind of clarify why I'm doing this kind of things. Uh, so I'm CTO at IBM. You can find me all here. But really, I consider myself a OSS-S. What is that S? It's important. Uh, before being in Alex's team at IBM and doing OSS, working a lot with Pivotal, I used to be a scientist. So I consider myself an OSS scientist. And you will see why that is relevant. So remember that. Yes? Sometimes, sometimes. But sometimes, you know, you dream big, right? Maybe. OK, so what's the problem? What's the problem? So let's get straight to it. So what's the problem? The problem is that you have a developer, Fred, uh, that has an idea for like a line of business. LOB is line of business application, right? Uh, if you were in the keynote today, you saw parts of it where she wants to do a voting app, uh, Frederica, OK? Uh, and uh, she starts with some kind of a voting function. Maybe at some point she creates an app using the voting function, putting some UI. Maybe she secures it with blockchain, like Nima and Sweta did this morning. Uh, she wants to scale it maybe to, to her business unit, and then eventually move it to a large organization. Right? This is a classic use case of a developer that's starting small and then growing to something that maybe becomes big. Right? You've seen this before. Maybe it's not using blockchain or, or voting apps, but you know, it's similar. So I think this covers about 80% of the cases most over everywhere. Right? Uh, of course, it's a simple one. Things get a lot more complicated. But let's see what we can do about this one. So it's important to note that during that entire time, and I believe so, and you could disagree with me, and if you do, let's have that discussion after, that she really never cared about the targeted platform. I, I really don't think she even thought of it right, until the later stages. She wanted to add some feature incrementally. So keep adding stuff as you go along, because you don't know, the, you know what's going to happen. And she wanted to layer what we call non-functional attributes to her app after. So things like scaling, things like securing. It's important to design your app with that in mind, but you also want to be able to add those things as you need. Like So scaling, for instance, you might want to auto-scale. You might want to automatically scale to a big number initially. So those things you want to add after. The reality is, though, is that you have many different platforms that are available. Uh, you know Kubernetes is a thing. Uh, there's also another thing called Knative. Then there's also Amazon that does their own thing. Uh, of course, there's us, Cloud Foundry. And then you can name it, right? OpenWhisk. And I bet you there'll be more, because Kubernetes encourages more things like Knative, right? To layer on top of the base platform. So a lot of these things exist, and they, they are not all perfect. You know, some give you more advantage than others. And of course, you select one, you become locked in. Of course, in Cloud Foundry, because most of those things are open source, so you can kind of pick one, and then you move to different vendors. But you're still kind of locked into a particular one. Eventually, you, you can do some work and remove yourself, but you're there, right? And I think the goal, though, especially for large organizations that are not just doing one line of business application, but many, many is to be somehow focus on your code. Just focus on your code, get it done, and then all the other things come after. I really think that's the value, and that's something that in Cloud Foundry we've set. But now there's a reality that there's many alternatives. Okay, So I think that's the reality of the world. Uh, so what's the solution to this? Now, you may disagree that that's not a problem. Okay, But let's assume that's a problem. So I invite you to agree with me for a little bit. So what is the solution to this problem, which is that there are multiple platforms. They all, do, they all have different features. They kind of do almost the same things, but not the same way. The experience is different in each. right? So how could we do better for people like Fred so that different parts of our application, she has something better than what exists right now? Because like, if she wants to use Kubernetes, she's going to have to do a bunch of YAML. 
Uh, if you've never seen those YAML files, I encourage you to go check it out. It's not fun. Even for somebody with Bosch background that do, does a lot of YAML, Kubernetes does a shitload more. Um, Knative, guess what? Same thing. Cloud Foundry, very simple experience, but maybe some limits. Uh, you know, so everybody has their kind of different experience, right? So I claim that the solution that we want is the following. A unified pass. Can we create one? So it's a big question. Uh, and part of what that would do is one platform as a service experience, maybe I should put that here, uh, that rules them all. Could we create that? That's exactly what I tried to do. So I will show it to you for the first time. First thing, warning, it's experimental, it's alpha, very early. What you're gonna see is not even public yet, but I will make it public soon. And then I invite you to give me feedback if you think it's cool. All right, so one thing I wanna kind of go over and then we'll get to the demo and then we'll go back to slides is this idea that you know, I'm gonna target those platform. Uh, I won't show you the serverless one today because uh, I don't have enough ready, but a lot of this is there. Uh, this is kind of a chart to show you that not all the features are gonna be exposed by all platform, but the experience will be the same. That's what I'm hoping for. And then, of course, it's extensible so that you can add more columns, okay? So those are my desiderata, and then we'll get to the demo. Actually, a few slides because I want to show you kind of the experience in slides and then we'll get to it. So what I'd like is, and this is again my goal, desiderata means that I'm hoping and I would like those things for Fred, but obviously we may not be able to achieve all of them. So a uniform ex interface to all paths. Now interface, not go interface, meaning the interface of a user. Uh, target many of them. Uh, Common workflow, I think that's the key. That's where the experience comes from. Uh, support various QoS, and then make it extensible. You will see my proposal for the experience, my implementation. It is influenced by both Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes and Bosch and so on, so I hope you like it. So one thing you can do, here are some examples, and then we'll get to, slide, to, to, to code to see it. So you can do something like UPMs and it shows you the different environments. You can create environments, delete environments, and so on. Uh, you can check what plugins are available. Of course, the current plugin that's being used. You can check apps. You can create apps, delete apps, and so on. And then uh, I'll do a demo. So let's see it live instead. So, um, so I have two, two, two um, things here. Uh, one on the right is mostly because when I'm running Kubernetes, I can show you more because I can use the Kubernetes thing. And then on the left here is gonna be where I use it. So first thing we'll do is we'll say uh, UPMs. So we list the different environments. You can see that I have two Knative environment and one CF environment. Um, of course, you could keep adding more. Uh, the first one is the one that's targeted. You see the little star. So we can say something like UP apps, and we can list the different apps. Right now, I'm just deploying the, the basic Hello application from uh, the Knative. Uh, you see it's been running for 21 days on this particular environment. Uh, the second environment, uh, if you look in the top, so you say UP set env and then you give it the number or the name, so I can say one, so now we switch to one. So we can say UP apps again, then we'll see it. Uh, I created one yesterday, 21 hours for Dr. Nick, but I forgot to put the D, so let's delete it. I know, it's horrible. <laughs> so I can say UP delete app, and then the name, and it's deleting it. Uh, so now if we say UP apps, all right, and you can say UPLA for list apps. So there's lots of shortcuts and so on. So what we should do is create maybe like an app, a simple app. Um, now, so you understand these things are running on Knative uh, and we can test them, but we have to do a special curl. But you'll see that it actually goes through and we can actually hear um, in Kubernetes uh, get services. 
Everything is using the default, and I'll explain to you that, the default namespace, that's why I don't have to put the namespace here. So you'll see that it's, it's showing those, and then as I create new one, you'll see them coming to live. So we'll just watch it for a second, and then you'll see the new one. So of course, I'm doing here up uh, create app minus h. Uh, yeah, so here's kind of the help for it, right? So we can go and do the simple app. So here you're passing a Docker uh, um, container image, um, but you can actually uh, a Docker uh, yeah a Docker image that's already in GCR.io in that repository, but you can also put a Git. You can also do build pack. Uh, part of this, especially the plugin for Knative, was influenced. Uh, I work a lot with Dimitri. That's why I can joke with him. <laughs> We actually built something called KNCTL, which is an experience for just Knative. And, uh, and, and some of it, I, it certainly influenced a little bit this. But we'll deploy one. Uh, we'll say hello, Basil, right? So if you watch on the right hand side, you'll see that um, the new app is being created. So we'll say hello, dash, Basil. And then as it's creating, you'll see on the right hand side, it's putting it up. So you can see now there's a Halo Basel service. Now in Knative, as you create more of the same thing, it creates revisions and so on, and I'm not exposing that because the experience has to be the same. And why? Because I also want to be able to do the same thing in Cloud Foundry. And I'll show you that in Cloud Foundry, I also have that, right? So UPF and then in UP, you know, set environment to two to switch it to Cloud Foundry, and then we can say UP apps. It takes a little bit more time in Cloud Foundry to list the apps because it has to go through the whole process of login, target, and so on, and also because I'm reusing the CLI, but the intent for the real plugin will be to essentially code it directly to the API, so it will be a little bit faster. Um, but you'll see the experience is the same. Creating apps on Cloud Foundry will be exactly the same way, the same thing. Deleting apps, the same thing. And then I'll show you a little bit more. So one thing that I got feedback on is to get the same output, because of course I can generate JSON out of this, and I can generate YAML. So making the output the same is also another target. So part of the idea, this is a basic flavor of it. These apps run. I mean, I can show you that after. But I want to show you a little bit of where, where I intend to go with this, because Part of the idea is not to just do apps, it's also all the other things. So let me show you in slides at least where I'm going with it so that you can have an idea. And then also, when we, after we go through this, you can also create environments, delete environments. And when you create environments on Knative, it actually installs Knative for you, delete, removes it. You do have to have a cluster ready. So things like that, right? So, but for Cloud Foundry, we could even make creating environment, spinning up, depending on the kind of plugin that you're using, Bosch Lite, or just connecting to a real Cloud Foundry. So part of the idea is unifying the experience, and then unifying what I mean, what I'm naming apps, functions, services, brokers, and so on. So let me show you a little bit more in slides, but hopefully next time you see this, they'll be more implemented. Uh, so for functions, it will be similar. So you create functions, you delete them. You can also, one of the things that I, that I realize, and this is the same for everything, is that I'm, I'm actually, def I define a spec. It's not the Kubernetes specification for those different objects, right? But it has enough information that covers all so that you can download the spec, modify it, and apply it. Because I'm doing all this machinery in UP to do that for you. So in some ways, I want to give a little bit of the flavor that you get with Kubernetes, but also the flavor in Cloud Foundry, because you saw as I was using the CLI, it feels more like Cloud Foundry. Other thing is I want to add is events, because you know, creating functions without having events is kind of useless, right? Because you want to have triggers for those functions. And that, in Knative, they're not quite ready for events, or at least the event is still in beta or alpha mode, I should say. So that's why you saw serverless, because I'm implementing the, the plugin for serverless instead. Um, yes. Yeah, serverless.com. Yeah, they have kind of like an API that they've defined that allows you to use different uh, functional uh, function as a service platform. So targeting them 
hopefully. And again, as I said, this is alpha in experiment. So what I'm hoping to do is to learn. And then, of course, if other people are excited and see if it, if it has value, right? So services, it's pretty straightforward in the sense of, you know, you do have to have brokers, so the experience is going to also map with the brokers. I also realize that you need registries because, or at least registering registries so that you can have access to images. Otherwise, you're going to have to pass secrets and stuff like that. So it will become a little bit more complicated than what it is right now. But I'm hoping the, the basic thing is the same. Now, for QoS, this is maybe the most important piece, is that I think the way I look at QoS is because, it, did you see when I listed the plugins, I am defining QoS objects for the different environments. So for the different plugins, right, auto scaling, blue, green, and so on. So the idea would be that you, would, you, you could do something like this where when you want to apply the QoS, you say apply the name of the QoS and then your app name and so on. And it will do the work to translate that command into the right thing. So in Cloud Foundry, it would mean creating a, a, a service instance for the auto scaler, setting up a policy, connecting them, and so on. So in some ways, again, I'm optimizing for the basic 80% case. Obviously, people might want more, deal, more details, right? But then you go into Kubernetes, or you go into Cloud Foundry. So, you know, there's pros and cons, but if I can do that and I can cover what Fred wants, as an enterprise user, hopefully she's happy and she can target all those different ones without having to deal with the underlying stuff. There are challenges, lots of challenges. So I will list them, and of course, there'll be some, some time for questions, so you can maybe even point out more. So ingress and egress across those different paths environment. I think that's, that's a big deal. Uh, I think I know how to solve it, because with, uh, when you create the environment, I can add things. With Cloud Foundry adding Istio, it shouldn't be too hard for me to essentially use that, set up VPN, VPCs across the different environments. So that's something I'm looking at. I'm actually engaging with a research team at IBM to help me on this. So that's one thing. There's a big question about, is the common denominator of features enough, right? That's always going to be a big thing. But I, I, the gut feel is that if I can optimize for that 80%, that's good enough to start with. Uh, those functional attributes, you can ask the same question for that. There are other things like logs, SSH, you know, obviously that we could do. So we can definitely look into those things. Um, m most of this, I feel, is possible at least for the current plugins that I have. Uh, obviously, accepting something like this is, is a big deal, right? Because you're essentially saying to the community, here's a better experience over your native experience. But remember, a part of the idea is that we're targeting people that you know, don't want to deal with the underlying detail. She just wants to have her app running. So next steps, uh, obviously, Keep continuing the different, you can see that I have a, a, a you know, particular pattern that I'm trying to be uh, very uh, keen on in terms of verbs, the object, and then options. Uh, service and event discovery is definitely next steps. Um, there are some details of the commands that I didn't show you, but obviously I need those, like memory and so on, to make them you know, very consistent, but we can do that. Image registry, I think, is, is an interesting question, because if you don't do that, then you're going to have to set it up. And I discovered this working with Dimitri on the Knative, KNCTL um, uh, CLI, because a big part of that uh, is essentially making sure that you have registries. Now, if it's a public registry, no big deal, right? But I'm talking private registries, uh, because each one of them have different things. It's not just like username and password. Some of them requires you, you know, big certificates and stuff. But it, it, it's not hard to add, right? So it's coming up with what the experience should be. Uh, this is what I mentioned, uh, VPC between EVs. And part of the idea is that you could have your really, your service running on Cloud Foundry and your Kubernetes running on, you know, or, I'm sorry, your app running on some Knative and then another piece of the app, but they're all connected with each other. They don't have to go to the public. You can do that to the public, but if you had a private one, you can see how it works, right? 
So you really give them a really nice uh, unified experience. Uh, Nima from our team uh, had this great idea, uh, the idea of like allowing you to have migration, so migrate app between environments, right? In some ways, it's possible because I have all the details there. So, so that's something I could explore. Uh, Dr. Nick had even a better idea. He said, well, if I'm going to love this, I would like to be able to say, UP create app, not even specify the environment, and then it would detect kind of an enhanced build, build pack, which environment is best for my app. It's an interesting idea. I'm not sure I would put it in seven. I put it here for you. But <laughs> it's definitely something to look into. Um, and then, of course, something like this only is valid if other people come in and join, right? So um, maybe even creating a better plugin than the one that I have right now. So that's, that's one thing. Um, and then socializing it. I'm starting the socialization just because I've talked to enough people in my, so I talked, of course, to my boss here. And then he said, well, talk to Jason. If Jason likes it, maybe we can talk about something. So I talked to Jason and a few other people. And they, they were like, yeah. So, so this is, you're the first to see this. Uh, and, uh, you know, but hopefully I'll be presenting it again with more features. Uh, but if you're interested, ping me so that we can, uh, we can talk about it and I can give you access. So with that, I want to thank you and see if you have questions. What do you think? Thank you. <laughs> it was a very sarcastic club, but no. what is your question, Dr. Nick? Addition to? I mean, I've had the benefit of 21 hours of since school. I say 21 because that's what the app says. That's true, that's true. Um, do you hate it more or like it more? Uh, okay, I it's think, somebody else. You know, I think you slipped over the, the, the problem statement. Hmm. Yes, that's true. Um, worth solving. And then there's, there's the, uh, perhaps the broader, you know, 10 years from now, we look back, and it's Cloud Foundry is a thing that people are still talking about. Mm. And you go, what is it in 10 years? My guess is it's a unified path. Like it, it has a flexible reference to, to where things run, and it sits I, on top of other things. And I'm not so sure, though. You could do that. You could keep layering things, which is where we are heading. I just think it has to keep sitting above things anyway. Otherwise yeah, but. It Here's, here's what I discovered. When you talk to the folks in my team and that are doing Kubernetes, they actually love this document YAML model. I mean, they get lost in it, but they kind of like it. And then you talk to people doing Cloud Foundry, they love that experience. When you talk to customers that don't know any of it, they hate the Kubernetes because too much YAML, and they kind of like the Cloud Foundry better. right? No, 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 I agree, I agree. But the point I'm making is Knative, though, is essentially making it a pass. But it's not, it's not Kubernetes at that point, it's Knative. Oh, I agree, but in Knative, without KNCTL, you have to do those YAML, absolutely, even more. So the point I'm making is the experience, the experience is horrible for a wide variety of the population that just want to focus on their code. And it's going to get worse, because Kubernetes is designed to allow more things like Knative to exist. And we don't know which one is going to win. So I'm saying, coming from Cloud Foundry, let's reinvent that shit. Let's make it better. And that's what I'm hoping to, this achieves. That's the goal. Right? I didn't say that, but that's the goal. Let's reinvent paths, but make it unified even. But that's an opinion, though. So you, I, I may be very wrong that you know, most people are quite happy with their YAMLs and quite happy. Well, I mean, I, I don't feel like I understand why people want something like Cloud Foundry, but not Cloud Foundry. Well, so no, so, so like, this is saying, this is saying, this is saying you, you learn one experience which is better than Cloud Foundry. So that's one of the things that I'm doing too. I'm trying to make it better than Cloud Foundry. And then that experience will port across the different, the different passes. But anyway, hopefully enough time has passed and other people have to Yeah, yeah let's see, let's see, let's see. No? Ah, yes? Uh, so to try to, to get this together, I, I'm not really uh, an application developer in that sense, so, but I feel like there are enough CLIs out there, and this is just adding another CLI to the stack of CLIs I need to know if I have to deal with all these environments. And I think the real uh, value here is 
the, the manifest is suggested, like having a unified manifest form of or of a different uh, car concept itself should be great. Mm. Then not just CLI, but have every car uh, implement this uh, more generic uh, manifest okay. in a way. So that then the support for the uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's an interesting point. I mean, obviously, I think there's more value than just the manifest, because to prove that the manifest works, you have to build all this stuff, right? So you can, you kind of, you know, it's a chicken and an egg thing. And then the second problem with what you're suggesting is that in Kubernetes, for instance, they've had a hard time agreeing on what the manifest for app would be. So much so that Knative itself, which came from Google, so I'm assuming those guys talk to each other, uh, completely defined it differently. And it, but it does apps, pretty much. So there is a group in, in Kubernetes defining apps, and then Knative from Kubernetes also defined it completely differently. And I bet you there are more. So I think it, it is true that there will be great value in the, 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 the notion of those different things and having very clear specification for them. But you can't prove that works without you know, some ways to drive it. Now, of course, you know, that's one way to drive it. So I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, but, I, but I, I don't think I could say, hey, here's how I like paths to, uh, apps to be defined and then go and implement it. That's never going to work. And, and now, you know, the interchange from, uh, from the export, the export, yes, yes, yes. No, I agree with you. I'm just saying that they are having problem agreeing themselves. So you sort of have to do it outside, and then hopefully it catches on. Right, but if you do it outside, you have to prove the value, right? So, any other questions? And by the way, if you're interested in this, I can share some of the details of the manifest with you and so on. Part of why I'm not showing it is because it's still in flux. At least the CLI experience is not gonna change much because it's sort of a crud over things. Yes? Can we move on into the controversial Yeah, it's cool. It can be more controversial than him. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to stick with that platform. Like a company will not launch four platforms. Uh, they won't go for Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry. I think this is a unique value where the company has like four platforms, mm -hmm. where the developers might might confuse with all the CLIs. But I'm asking you, what is the market percentage of yeah. companies that use all the four platforms? So according to Chip this morning, 44%. 44% of all Cloud Foundry users have looked at Kubernetes and stood up Kubernetes. And I can't reveal IBM numbers, but I can tell you it's even better than that. Okay. And I'm sure if you talk to the other people, you'll see. So in other words, well, people are trying different ones. Now, it doesn't mean they, are, they could be just testing it. That's like, but that's OK, though, right? No, 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 they could be experimenting with it. I agree with you. It's not, it's not a notion of 44% or in production with Kubernetes at the same time as Cloud Foundry. But if they are testing it, then some percentage of them will eventually go to production, right? So, yes? So this is primarily directed to line of business developers, right? So we are yes. assuming that there was, there's always going to be a mix. Some developers who would want access to specific platform, platforms to serve specific use cases. Yes. And then those uh, line of business developers who, who are not really concerned about the platform, so they want to move yeah, I'm, I'm seeing this because obviously one of the problem with abstracting and having a unified layer is that all of a sudden you have to drop some things. And then once you do that, the expert user will be like, well, that's that little thing that I'm looking for and I need to use it, right? So there's going to be those people. But I think, I, I mean, at least, you know, coming with some enterprise knowledge, you know, I mean, there are certainly enterprise people that want to do low level stuff, they want to define you know, uh, services and detail stuff and so on. Yeah, but I think we can cover vast majority of this LOB folks. And, you know, for big enterprises, it's, it, I think it's, it's a big part of that, right? Making their life easy. I mean, that's the reason they love Cloud Foundry, right? I'm, I'm saying I love Cloud Foundry, but it's time to think bigger and use the experience we had in Cloud Foundry, use some of the experience we had in Bosch, you know, with setting up different environments, because nobody just used one environment. You have a bunch, you have tests, you have multiple tests. So having a unified experience over this and over those different platforms is a good thing. And it would be hard for me to go to 
the current CLI in Cloud Foundry and say, oh, you should change it and then come up with something new. So we do, I think this is saying, let's reinvent it, but let's learn from those uh, experiences and target that class of people. All right, I'll be around. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free. Ping me also. Uh, this is my Twitter, uh, and uh, my uh, IBM email is maxim at us.ibm.com. But if you go there, you ping me, I'll, I'll, I'll reply to you. I'm always on the cap call. I run the cap call. So if you are in uh, Cloud Foundry, I would encourage you to join those cap calls so you can chat with me, uh, and we can have different conversation. I'm hoping by the time next time we meet, there'll be even more, and then it will be public. People can try it and so on. But if you want to have access now, I can, I can do that. So thank you again for your time.